Yo guys, Jonathan here. This is the Google Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL, the almost perfect smartphones. Now when these were announced, everybody was excited. DxO Mark scores to the roof, finally a bezel-less display, at least on the Pixel 2 XL. But then devices started rolling out, people started getting them in hand, and it almost turned into this horror story for Google. Now aside from the beatdown Google's taken over the past couple of weeks, there's actually a lot to like about the Pixel 2 and its bigger brother. So what's kind of weird is both the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL come in different color variants. With the regular version, we have just black, clearly white, and kind of blue, like the XL2 screen. Is that right? On a serious note though, I actually really like the kind of blue. It is a super soft, almost bluish mint color. I even prefer it over last year's really blue. Jumping over to the Pixel 2 XL, this actually comes in two colors, just black and black and white, AKA Panda. Now if you ordered a regular Pixel and you need some of that Panda action in your life, the easiest fix for that is to hit up the robots and throw a D-brand skin on that. This is not a Panda but it sure as hell looks like one. They even got you Dodger fans covered too. Links are below. So when you stack the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL side by side, the very apparent bezels on the regular Pixel 2 really stand out. The Pixel 2 XL looks like it's a phone from 2017, whereas the regular Pixel 2 kind of feels a little dated. Regardless though, the layout on either of these phones is awesome. I really enjoy the location of the fingerprint reader on the back. It works flawlessly. The volume up and down buttons are right smack next to your thumb. Super easy to access. Same thing with the power button. It just feels good. Now on the bottom of the Pixel 2 there there is a USB-C port, which is always awesome. There is no wireless charging with this, which for me is not a deal breaker. Some people either really, really love wireless charging or some people don't care at all. And I would love to hear what side of the fence you're on. Regardless though, wireless charging is not a positive with the Pixel 2s. You're gonna get up to seven hours of battery life with 15 minutes of charging. And there's absolutely no room to complain about that. From there, you might notice that USB-C port is kind of just hanging out there by himself. There is no headphone jack. And the only weird part about that is Google made a really big deal about the headphone jack last year when the Pixel debuted. And this year they were kind of like, on a serious note though, I don't think not having a headphone jack is a deal breaker, especially for me. Anytime I can go wireless, I am going to go that route. Yes, there's the whole debate about audio quality and having a wired cable. But for me, there are tons of fantastic sounding wireless Bluetooth headphones out there. So I'm going to go that way. So while Google did kill off the headphone jack, one giant feature they added this year is water resistance. And that might be one reason alone to upgrade over last year's Pixel. Maybe you're someone who always has their phones near the water. If you're in a shower or a bath, Super staff. Now when you pick up your shiny new Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL in the box, you get an 18 watt USB-C charger, the USB-C cable, and a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter audio adapter. So just in case you're holding onto those wired headphones, you can use it out of the box. What's kind of weird though, is there are no headphones in sight within this box. It would have been really nice to have a pair of USB-C headphones with the Pixel 2. On the other hand, you have companies like Samsung going above and beyond, including a nicer pair of headphones. So if that matters to you, that is some food for thought. From there, it's time to hop over to probably the most controversial subject with the Pixel 2, and that is the display. Specifically, that is geared more towards the Pixel 2 XL display as opposed to the regular Pixel 2. That features a five inch 1920 by 1080 AMOLED display, whereas the Pixel 2 XL features a six inch 2880 by 1440p OLED display, which seems to be causing all kinds of problems. Like there is no denying there is a very apparent problem with the Pixel 2 XL screen. There is major blue shift if you tilt it off axis like any sort of way. The part where it gets a little tricky though is I think if you just handed this phone to the average person out there, they are not gonna pick up on this. It is the super tech audience that is going deep, diving deep, and really getting crazy technical with this, like throwing it down to 10, 15% brightness with a gray screen, like that is kind of crazy. Is that reason enough just for the screen to not buy the Pixel 2 XL? I'm gonna say, no, because there are many, many enticing features with the Pixel 2 XL. It's just very disappointing because if there was ever a company that you would root for to put Apple and kind of kick their ass, it is Google, they're giant. This is a flagship phone with flagship pricing and you would expect better from them. So with that, it's kind of confusing and has me a little torn. On one hand, you have the regular Pixel 2, which has a totally fine display, but really, really big bezels. And then you have the Pixel 2 XL, which is kind of like that person that you see from a distance. It's good from far, but you get it up close and it is far from good. <laughs> On top of that, I do get that Google is going for that non-saturated look that we've kind of grown accustomed to with smartphones over the years. But the fact of the matter is, 
Certain colors just look really off, especially with red. Again, it's not a bad display, and I don't think it should solely be a reason to turn you off from the Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL, but when you compare it to something like a Samsung Galaxy S8 or Note 8, there is no comparison. Now packed inside the Pixel 2 is a Snapdragon 835, four gigabytes of RAM, there is no micro SD card expansion, but there is a really solid amount of storage with these. The base Pixel 2 comes in at 64 gigs, or you can bump it all the way up to 128 gigabytes. On top of that, you also do have unlimited storage with Google Photos, so yeah, that is definitely a thing. From there though, now that we got the ugly, controversial part out the way, there is a lot to love about the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. For starters out of the box, you are getting sweet, sweet, pure, unadulterated Android 8.0 Oreo. It's super clean, super smooth, and unlike other Android phones, Google is promising three years of support and updates. I really, really love the wallpapers, especially the live versions. Those are just kind of fun to look at and zone out at. And what is really, really freaking cool with these is that it's smart enough to know what your wallpaper is. So if you have a dark one, it's gonna automatically switch the theme of your phone to dark. And if you have a light wallpaper, it will automatically switch it to light. Now, one minor complaint that is geared specifically towards the Pixel 2 XL is because it has that extra tall 18 by nine screen, I wish they would implement some sort of feature like Samsung does where you can punch in or crop in on YouTube videos. It's not the end of the world, but just something I'd like to see in the future. From there, I wanna talk about Google Assistant and also roll in the squeeze feature because that is one way to access the Google Assistant. Is this a revolutionary, mind-blowing feature? No, but I don't hate it and it actually works pretty well. Schedule a timer for 12 minutes. Okay, 12 minutes, starting now. What was the score of the Bulls game? The Bulls' last game was against the Cavaliers. They lost 119 to 112. Man, it sucks to be a Bulls fan this year. Punching people in the face. What is the traffic like? to Los Angeles right now. There's moderate traffic from your location to Los Angeles, so it'll take about 42 minutes. See, that is super fast. So that part of this phone is awesome and it works really well just as advertised. From there, I'm gonna kind of kill two birds with one stone. Play Porter Robinson. So yeah, there is a ton of volume. That is definitely not anything lacking there. I think overall I would say if there was anything missing, it would be the low end. There's not a crazy amount there, but regardless, I would definitely take stereo speakers over non-stereo speakers any day of the week. From there, always on display is an awesome feature to have. Something that I wish worked just a little bit better was the song recognition. It's not that it's bad, and it's kind of confusing because by default, it is turned off. So if you picked up a Pixel 2 and it's not working, more than likely you have to go into settings to enable it. But from there, the database in the library isn't exactly the biggest, so it's not always gonna recognize every song. And from what I understand, it actually checks every 60 seconds to say battery life, so it's not always gonna to feel the fastest or the quickest. Next, we're gonna talk about, hands down, the most impressive thing about the Pixel 2, and that is the camera. Seriously, forget the 94 on that DxO Mark score. It should just read next to the Google Pixel 2 really good. Seriously, what Google has done with this camera is nothing short of incredible. Some of the best images I've ever captured are from the Pixel 2. It's a 12.2 megapixel sensor with an f-stop of 1.8, and the color, the sharpness, the detail, everything about this camera is awesome. Now, one thing I really like with the Pixel 2 is that portrait mode is gonna work on both the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. You're not gonna have to choose between one of the phones because it actually works on one single lens, which is kind of crazy. One small thing that may turn off some people is there's no way to preview that portrait mode beforehand, so you kind of just got to take the photo and hope for the best, but most of the time it works out really well. One other thing is you're not going to get as much flexibility as something like the iPhone 8 Plus, the Galaxy Note 8, or the upcoming iPhone 10, where you can kind of tweak and manipulate things in post, but regardless, it is still really impressive. It's almost scary to see what Google is doing with a single lens, and I'm stoked to see where they take this in the future. Next, I want to talk about portrait selfie mode. It works incredible, and it is super impressive, but I had a hard time getting it working. And for you out there that's freaking out right now saying, you're just an Apple fanboy. You don't know how to Android is too complex and superior for you. No, man. There are threads and forums deeper than your mom. Like I was seriously asking for help on Twitter and I got people yelling at me asking if I could rename photos. The simplest way is to find the update link, click on it and hope that it opens in the Play Store because it is not publicly available. If that doesn't work, you gotta go into settings, clear cache and data on the Play Store, potentially the camera app as well, reset things, go back into the Play Store and hope that an update shows up. Now for most people out there, that will fix the problem, but there are certain cases, like I experienced, where it actually affects certain Google accounts. So for me, for whatever reason, that update did not wanna show up. The absolute weirdest bug fix and workaround that I've ever heard of happen with the Pixel 2. If you have a friend where their Google account shows the camera update, 
have them log into your phone, update the camera, have them log out, and then magically your phone is now fixed. It's crazy. At the end of the day though, finally got it working. Even if I had to side load a freaking APK, it was worth it because the Pixel 2 selfie portrait mode is amazing. Now on the flip side of that, some people are over critical of the Pixel 2 selfie portrait mode, like looking for any possible mistake. Yes, it's not gonna be perfect every time. Yes, it's not gonna always get hair right. Yes, it sometimes may mistake a piece of the background for the foreground, but overall, it is crazy what Google is doing with that. So yeah, between the front facing camera, the rear camera portrait mode on both sides, the Google Pixel 2 as a camera overall is two giant thumbs up. So we're hopping over to the 4K 30 FPS test here on the Pixel 2. Ralphie, rich in that hard part. Let me get up close on that. Some quick autofocus. Also, we'd love to hear what you guys think of the video quality and the stabilization. Drop me a comment down below. Lastly, shout out to Mr. Brand on the camera. He makes a pretty awesome videos. Check him out too, link below. Lastly, battery life on the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL overall are really solid. Obviously, you're going to get more of a workhorse with the Pixel 2 XL because you're getting a larger battery. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what it came down to between these two phones, battery life and the screen. So clearly, if you need that better battery performance, the Pixel 2 XL is the way to go. And normally, it would have been a no-brainer. You want that bigger, better display, go for the Pixel 2 XL as well. But with that weird Piola display and that blue color shift, it kind of makes things a little confusing. On one hand, do you downsize to the regular Pixel so you don't have to worry about those weird display issues? Or do you suck it up for that better battery life and go with the Pixel 2 XL? So with this video, hopefully there was enough cover with the features and the software to kind of get you to that almost ready to buy point. And then from there, the best advice I could possibly give you is head into a store if you can and look at these displays in person. I could show you a million times over a YouTube video how that blue shift looks like, but it's never gonna really simulate real life. And then from there, you can ask yourself, is this enough to make me not wanna buy the Pixel 2 XL? Are the bezels big enough to where they're gonna annoy me and I'm gonna wanna go somewhere else? And that will ultimately help you make your decision. Aside from that, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to smash that like button. If you are not feeling the Google Pixel 2, maybe we check out the Galaxy Note 8, which you can watch here. Again, huge shout out to Dbrand for sponsoring this video. This is Jonathan, and I will catch you guys later. Damn. Evans. Wait, I didn't see that. Do it again. Get the, get the top arms. Get yeah. the bottom arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, you're a veiny sucker.